The African Transformation Movement says the South African Revenue Service is flip-flopping around the Pala Pala Farm robbery scandal. It comes after the receiver of revenue opened a criminal case against Sudanese millionaire Hazim Mustafa, who's said to have bought a buffalo from President Sir Ramaphosa's game farm in December 2019 for 580,000 US dollars in cash. The ATM, says SARS, is selective in its investigative work after it cleared Ramaphosa of wrongdoing in the February 2020 robbery at his game farm in Bela Bela, Limpopo. But to help us understand their dissatisfaction is African Transformation Movement leader Vuyo Zungula, who joins me in the studio. Uh, Mr. Zungula, great to see you. Now, let's talk about this flip-flopping, these, these allegations that you make against SARS. Uh, where is your source of dissatisfaction? Um, SARS is supposed to conduct, um, you know, a 360-degree investigation whereby they leave no stone unturned. I'll make an example that for a person to come from outside of the country, come into um, our country via SARS or via um, the customs, go to Bella Bella and leave 580,000 US dollars in cash, where was the SARS customs that was there supposedly to ensure that there is no money that comes in? Um, into our country. Secondly, now the receiver of these dollars, now you can't have a case whereby a president of the country, someone who's um, sworn to uphold the law, does not do any due diligence in terms of ensuring that the person who is bringing this amount of dollars indeed did declare them because if a person wants to launder money, they would not want to declare money. So if a person now, such as the president, does not even verify if these dollars are legitimately here in the country, then it raises questions. So therefore, in our view, what SARS should have done is to investigate every player that is involved and not only so focus on this um, billionaire that is coming from another country who would have also difficulties in terms of getting them into South Africa for them to face full accountability because we know with how... Um, uh, when a person commits a crime in our country, sometimes it's very difficult for that person to come into our country and answer for their questions. Therefore, in our view, everyone should have been investigated, not this single individual. So, so let's talk about SARS jurisdiction. Uh, what jurisdiction do they have over uh, this individual who is not a resident of, of South Africa? And certainly, is it, is it worth the effort? Um, look, what SARS is trying to do, they are trying to make it appear as if they are doing something. Mm. Because people are upset when it comes to how they, all of these institutions from your SAPS, your Public Protect, your Reserve Bank and SARS have handled the, the Palapala issue. And because, precisely because there's been cases whereby there's been people that have been arrested for caring um, of, of, of being in possession of um, foreign currency that was not declared. However, in the case of Mr. Ramaphosa, the focus is not on him. The focus is on the person who allegedly brought those dollars into the country. Therefore, in our view, what SARS is trying to do, they want to act as if they are doing something by targeting someone who they know that there are very slim chances to get that person into the country. And they are saying nothing about the employees working in customs. And the question we should be asking ourselves now, how many people are coming in or going out of our country going past customs and you find that there's huge amounts of money that are going in or outside of the country because if 580,000 US dollars in cash managed to come in our country, it means there's a loophole or there's corruption that, that is happening in customs. Therefore, they should be doing investigation in terms of their proce processes um, when it comes to customs. And at the same time, they need to send a strong message by targeting a person who receives money that has not been declared so that you don't have people that are going to willingly um, accept um, dollars that, or foreign currency that has not been declared. And then those people are going to say, um, you know, we did not know, please um, chase the person who brought those um, dollars. They need, SARS needed to um, focus on everyone. And the last thing on this issue is that SARS has got an obligation to be truthful to South Africans because on one side, they were saying that Mr. Ramaphosa's Ndabonyoni close cooperation, um, their taxes was um, above board and everything was done according to the book. But the question is, if Mr. Ramaphosa did not declare that 580,000 to the Reserve Bank and the theft was not reported to, um, to the SAPS, how can it be that um, you know, one would assume that the money was reported to, to SARS? 
which begs the question of tax evasion because if money was not reported to SARS, then that is tax evasion. So in our view, SARS needs to act in a way that gives confidence to citizens that there is no politician, no president that is going to be treated as if they are above the law. So, so there are obviously two, two issues here. What, one of those issues is the professed innocence of uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa in this whole debacle. The, the other is what you might call a lapse in uh, financial transparency by, by SARS. Now, do you intend to take SARS to task for, for their failures to, to be transparent for what appear from, from your statement, what you've said in your statement, that these are double standards in how they police their mandate? Yeah, look, if we can focus or start with the innocence of Mr. Ramaphosa. Fortunately, in the past few days, um, the Secretary General of the ANC actually confirmed that Mr. Ramaphosa was guilty because he said after that independent panel report, Mr. Ramaphosa had resigned. It was just a matter of uh, making the public know. In other words, Mr. Ramaphosa knows, knew that he's guilty because there's no person that would resign if, um, you know, if he believed that he's not, he's not guilty. The fact that he had resigned but he was spoken or he was convinced not to resign by his fellow comrades that is another issue, but the fact that he resigned clearly but he, shows... he could have chosen to re re resign because he tarnished the, the image or reputation uh, of uh, the, the ANC, even though he, he may still plead as, uh, his innocence. Not at all when it comes to this issue, because the report of that independent panel was so extensive. Mm. And again, the, 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 the nature of the independent panel, that is why we always say currently, all of these other reports from your public protector, your SARS, your Reserve Bank, all of them, they are subject now of court cases because they are being challenged. There is only one report that no one has dared to challenge. It is the report of the independent panel because those independent panel um, um, report, firstly, it was done by people who have got nothing to benefit. They are not looking for employment from um, um, the, 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 the ruling party and at the same time, the wealth of experience that they have. And then on the second issue that you spoke about, about taking ta SARS to task, were of the view that SARS needs to be held accountable because it cannot be that they are going to be chasing citizens for failing to declare or failing to submit their tax returns. But on this issue or an issue that is concerning powerful politicians, you find that SARS is not equally having the will uh, you know, to, to effect the law. So that is why we as an organization, we've gone to court on the public protector issue. We're still consulting with our legal um, um, advisors on the question of um, challenging um, what SARS has done in terms of clearing the, um, Mr. Ramaphosa on the entire um, Pala Pala scandal. Now, you brought uh, ANC Secretary General Fikile Mbalula into, into the conversation, and uh, he's openly declared uh, his party's intention to, to protect its own, uh, even at the expense of, uh, of the voters. Um, how does the ATM interpret this stance? Um, you know, it shows how the ANC, not only during the past um, presidential terms, but even this past, uh, in this current term of the current president, that even on that Palapala issue, whereby when the report is there, a report is saying there's a case to answer, therefore a logical step for any parliament who to, was going to, be in, to investigate. The fact that they do not want any investigation to be done on their president clearly shows that we've got an ANC that is inward looking, a selfish ANC, an ANC that has got no care or no regard about um, our country because if they've got any regard for our country, they would have investigated when, when there's an independent panel report that suggests an investigation. And his um, confession that they, are, they lie to parliament to protect their own clearly shows that they are not fit to govern because when you are a governing party or you are in government, you need to act in accordance to the constitution and you need to put in the interest of the entire country, not the, not the interest of only your political party. Therefore, this, in our view, shows how the ANC has lost its plot and how the people need to rescue the country from being lied to by the ANC because if they lied about Nkandla, the question would be what else are they lying about? Would they be lying about load shedding? Would they be lying about the myriad of challenges that are facing the country? Because clearly their DNA is lying to protect themselves as, a, as, a, as an organization. Now, when we come back to that Section 89 independent panel, which found that uh, President Cyril Ramaphosa had a, had a case to, to answer, and the fact that almost nothing 
has, has been done about it. What, is, what does it speak to issues around accountability and the effort, uh, the claimed effort, certainly by, by the ANC government, to deal with, uh, with corruption? And I suppose all of this even goes back to, to the Zondo Commission that multiple findings were, were, were had and very little appears to, to have been done. To, to deal with those perpetrators. Look, you can't, uh, you can't have ANC and accountability in the same sentence because ANC has proven time and time again that they are opposed to any form of accountability on their leaders. Because if you look at the Zondo Commission of Inquiry, there is um, scathing fundings on some of the ministers that are currently in cabinet. And you can't have now a president that is going to allow uh, you know, a report that cost billions of rands and then their recommendations against sitting, um, you know, sitting uh, ministers, but the president does not act. And you can't have a case whereby ANC, also in parliament, is doing nothing to, um, you know, to improve the processes of parliament in order for them to prevent any form of state capture in the future and to deal with any wrongdoers when it comes to corruption. And most importantly, the admission by Mr. Mbalula on um, that the ANC lies to protect their people, again shows how the ANC needs to be relieved from governance in May because clearly they are willing to destroy the country as long as them as, um, as, 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 a, as, a, as an organization or as the leaders are protected. And again, we know in our country that they exert political pressure on officials. And the question that people should ask themselves, if they lied to parliament or in parliament about Nkandla and other issues, what political pressure would they be exerting in the other institutions, whether it's the NPA or is the Reserve Bank or SAPS or any institution that is there, that is there to protect our democracy, inculcate the values of accountability? What political pressures are those people subjected to in order to protect ANC leaders who are found in the wrongdoing? Because they can't only do it in Gantla or when it comes to Gantla. Chances are they're doing it everywhere and anywhere. Anything that, that they are doing wrong in our country, they are going to apply pressure to the investigating um, authorities so that they are not held accountable. Is President Cyril Ramaphosa being protected by South African Reserve Bank, by SARS and by the public protector? If so, why and how? Um, let's, focus, well, let's start with um, the public protector. I'll focus on one issue whereby mm. the public protector was saying um, Mr. Ramaphosa was not actively involved in the running of the business. Whereas the facts that are there, even his own affidavit, Mr. Ramaphosa, stipulates how he was involved in a particular sale, whereby he said, move money here and take this particular set of buffaloes and, and you know, this is how we are going to deal with the money. That, that is common sense that that person is actively involved in the running of the business. So that is the question of the public protector. On the Reserve Bank, if you look at the days between when the money was um, you know, delivered in Palapala versus the, when the money was supposedly stolen, it is more than 30 days. However, SARS, uh, sorry, the Reserve Bank now comes with a, a, a flimsy explanation that um, the, 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 the transaction was not perfected. In our view, we've never had any um, case whereby um, the Reserve Bank is, is going to say, the, um, the transaction is not perfected, whereas they should be encouraging further investigation and further probing, because if you are going to launder money, obviously you are not going to go the legal route of declaring money um, when you receive it, and you are not going to report a case to the police station if that money is stolen, because you are laundering money in the first place. Therefore, institutions, in our view, should have acted in a manner that promotes um, you know, anti-money laundering and anti-tax evasion. But in this case, they've done the opposite by firstly being evasive, by being secretive, and ensuring that they are going to um, um, tarnish the reputation of these institutions, all to protect one individual. Now, the ATM lodged a bid to set aside the public protector's report on the Palapala Farmgate scandal. Why does the party believe that this is necessary? Um, it's more than necessary because... We need to live in a country whereby whoever that is president is always held by the highest standard of the constitution and abides by our respective laws. Therefore, if you are going to have a clear violation of laws, particularly um, you know, our constitution, 
then people need to act against that particular individual who becomes president. We can't have a case whereby the presidents or the mighty and powerful political parties in our country are going to be exempt from the law, whereas we want South African citizens to abide by the law. We need to have a culture whereby citizens abide by the law, also the leaders who are in government also abide by the law. Again, there's a question of double standards, whereby citizens, there are some citizens that have been arrested for having um, you know, cash um, that in their possession that has not been declared or that is above the limit. But when it comes to Mr. Ramaphosa, that has not happened. We've, we read almost every day about how some of these politicians receive um, kickbacks from tenders and obviously they are going to operate in cash. Therefore, cash is a, is a, is a, is a mechanism or is a, is a system whereby people can launder money in. So that is why it becomes important that whenever there is any report of cash that has not been declared, that has not been um, reported, you need to investigate. So in our view as an organization, our fight is a fight of accountability, the fight of transparency, and the fight of holding our leaders to the highest standard because they are the ones that set the tone in terms of how citizens abide or do not abide by the law. Mr. Zangula, very quickly, we, we're run, running short of time. 2024, you talked about the election, offers you an opportunity to, to deal with some of the, these issues at the, at the ballot. How are your preps coming along, and does this this inadequacy, certainly, uh, by, by the ANC, offer you an opportunity? Look, we've been campaigning, um, having rallies, launches across the country, and people resonate with our message because, number one, we're a party that is not funded by any of these big corporates whereby we get, when we are in parliament, we represent their interests. For the past five years, we've shown that we represent the interests of South Africans. That is why we are able to talk about um, drug dealers are going to be even facing um, the rent manipulation, everything basically. And at the same time, we've offered tangible solutions to deal with crime, your unemployment, and the social problems that we have in our country. So we want as an organization to remind people that they need to take the responsibility of shaping the direction of the country. They can't be saying they're not going to participate in the electoral processes, yet they're going to complain when there's going to be load shedding, um, high levels of unemployment and crime. So in our view as an organization, people must take responsibility of shaping, the responsi of shaping the direction of the country, particularly come this May, because these elections are a matter of life and death of many South Africans, if you consider the high crime rates or high unemployment rates, because um, you know, there's a chance that the country could collapse if it continues in this trend. I appreciate your time as always. Thank you so much for speaking to us on In Focus. Thank you so much.